The internet now has become the number one place for the sale of children for sex. People under the impression, that's eh, a runaway kid. They don't see what I see. They said that she's just a teenager who's going through some personal issues. Her body looks like she could be prepubescent. We were expected to bring back at least $500. If you didn't, then that's when he would get violent. I call them the forgotten children. How are you? Joe Mazzilli is a veteran New York City cop. He set up the Pimp Squad in the late 1970s, and he's been tracking down pimps and gangs ever since. The sale of their victims for sex is the third largest and fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. Destiny, yes. Retirement yes. hasn't slowed him down. His successful private investigation firm allows him to run the Runaway Squad, rescuing missing children at the request of parents pro bono. This girl is missing, yeah. Mazzilli's current case is missing 14-year-old Destiny Butler. She's very talented, very smart, very, very intelligent, but she's easily manipulated. He says the scenario is all too familiar. In this particular case, it appears to be at this particular point you know, that she was lured, lured away, you know? A teenager from a broken home or rough neighborhood falling victim to a predator. There was text going back and forth from this child, naked photos. From the get-go, it was you know, purely a case of exploitation. By exploitation, Mazzilli's referring to sex trafficking, a crime most people associate with foreign women and girls. But pimps and criminal gangs across America are increasingly targeting runaways from right here in the US, typically teenagers from disadvantaged backgrounds who they force into prostitution. The FBI says that around 300,000 children could be at risk. These are not faraway kids in faraway lands. These are our kids on our street corners, our truck stops, our motels, our casinos. These are America's children. When they get on the street, these kids, you know, it can be, it can be a matter of days before they're exploited. And most of the time it is days, especially young girls. The amount of kids that we know to be victimized is increasing. Stacey Sheehan runs the Case Analysis Division at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, an agency set up by Congress that works with the Department of Justice and the FBI to track endangered runaways across the country. In 2013, one out of seven endangered runaways that were reported to the National Center were also being victimized through sex trafficking. 800,000 children go missing across America every year. With the rise of the internet as an advertising platform and a recruitment tool for pimps and gangs, the number of these children at risk from sex trafficking crimes is increasing. Which one was Destiny's room? Can you see it from here? Destiny Butler went missing almost a year ago from her home in Rosedale, Queens. Inga Bearden is a single mom of several kids. I waited and then I called 911. How many police officers came? Between six to 10. And it would have been from this precinct? The 105th. 105. Yeah. Did they take flyers out? Uh, no. They just searched the house, made sure, I guess, we weren't hiding her in the house, and then that was it. She contacted Mazzilli because she said the police have not been helpful, including the detective from the NYPD's missing persons unit assigned to Destiny's case. He hasn't been returning any phone calls. Communication with him is at a standstill. Many parents of sex trafficking victims we spoke to complained about a lack of police support. But Mazzilli says it's often not the officer's fault. Police departments across the country can't, can't take on all these. I mean, they could take like, these cases on, but how much attention can they give each one when so many people are missing? We have seen a problem with law enforcement. We've seen a problem where law enforcement is criminalizing many of these victims. Lauren Hirsch was a prosecutor at the Brooklyn DA's office for more than eight years. She now helps to run an anti-sex trafficking NGO and helped launch a high-profile campaign called the New Abolitionists. Sex trafficking is one of the most violent felonies out there, and yet the law recognizes it as a non-violent felony. Very few victims prosecute their exploiters because the law doesn't protect them. In fact, it's more likely to prosecute them. If a person, let's say a man, has sex with a child and he commits statutory rape, he receives a higher penalty than if that same person has sex with that same child and yet hands her a $20 bill. Some of it like happens kind of right underneath this train track. 
I've had girls who've told me that they've been exploited in this hotel. We have a lot of work to do and it's not just going after those traffickers and buyers, but it's making sure that locations like this one are, are held accountable as well. Fear is another reason why victims don't prosecute their abusers, since sex trafficking and gang violence are often connected, as one mother described to us. And it's tied to a lot of gang activity. You know, a lot of those people don't care if they kill people. My hands are tied. She turned to Mazzilli three years ago after her daughter had been missing for almost six months and police couldn't find her. That was really hard. And just knowing that I couldn't protect her, that was even harder. I don't think they realize that teenagers who run away are at higher risk, and these predators know that. As we sat with mother and daughter, the girl chose not to show her face on camera. She had been forced into prostitution at age 15 by the Bloods, a notoriously violent gang. It was um, what he called like introducing me to the game, basically into prostitution and into the Bloods. She described how her pimp took her to so-called clubs that were made for prostitution. Basically, you dance a little bit, whatever. You go in the back, do what you need to do, come back out, and it's just like, that was the order. How many of these places? All in Brooklyn? There's a lot in Brooklyn. A couple were in Manhattan. The problem did not go away. In my opinion, it's gotten worse. And it's become, became more difficult to track because everything's via the internet. Basically, the police, the public, don't have a visual on it. They're no longer seeing the hooker in the street. But the same thing is going on. Predators use the internet to lure their victims. Sometimes gangs will move them around a given city, around a state, and even across state borders. As far as I'm concerned, they need to tweak the laws a little bit to go after them for racketeering. House members hope to pass a collection of 12 anti-trafficking bills. They would address and criminalize the advertising of sex trafficking and put in place services that would help to rehabilitate victims. If you buy or sell an individual like a commodity, the law is coming after you. I'm here to find a kid. So you're in my way, you got a problem. Do you think you'll find destiny? Yeah, I, I definitely think you'll find destiny. I think this is the, you know, the highlight of my career. And you know, what's better than finding a missing kid, really?